next uh, from Black Magic Design, we're going to find out all about Resolve. Uh, Paul Sacconi is here. He's the director of uh, marketing, and uh, I'm really interested to see this because it just keeps getting better and better. More things get thrown <laughs> into Resolve, and then you now have uh, Raw Black Magic Raw. We have Black Magic Raw in there. We've tell got us about that entirely new editing tools. So yeah, it's going to be great. And it's ubiquitous, deep. Uh, DITs use it on set, and uh, my last four movies have been colored with uh, with Resolve, and now you can even edit with Resolve. Yep, I don't know if Absolutely. you're going to tell us about we that. We are going to talk about that for sure. And Fairlight Audio. Fairlight Audio, we'll touch on that as well. We've got some fusion effects. And it's for free. It's free. At least completely free with the camera, <laughs> so tell us all about it. Okay, so um, hi everyone. How many people are using Resolve today? That's not nearly enough of you. <laughs> okay, we're going to fix that. So um, for those of you that don't know about DaVinci Resolve, it's a, got a long history as a color correction tool, and it is probably the de facto standard. It's used on 80 to 90% of all feature films and episodic television shows that are produced down in Hollywood. So it is the industry standard color correction tool. And what we've been doing over the last five or six years, it was we've been adding more and more to it. So now in addition to color correction, it's editing, so you can do all of your nonlinear editing in Resolve. It also has built-in Fairlight audio, has fusion visual effects built in. So um, if you look at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see these tabs, and uh, these are different pages in the software. So just walk you through this very quickly. The media page is where you can import and organize all of your footage, add metadata. Uh, the cut page we're gonna talk about in a minute is um, a new edit page. Uh, there is the traditional edit page, which if you're used to using like Media Composer, Final Cut, or Premiere, um, this will be very familiar to you. The fusion page is used for visual effects. The color page, which we'll spend some time on for color correction. The Fairlight page is like having a built-in digital audio workstation right here in the software. And then delivery, everything from web videos to digital cinema packages can be uh, created from the deliver page. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the cut page. A lot of people have asked us this year about um, why did we add a cut page when we already had an edit page. And the simple answer is we took a hard look at uh, the kinds of work that people do in the industry. And there are really those people that are working on the films and the episodic television or documentaries and sort of longer form sophisticated things. And then there's a lot of people that are just doing the short form, quick turnaround work. And we realize that those are really two different cultures and they really need two different sets of tools. So the cut page was added this year for those uh, people specifically. And I'm gonna show you why, um, why it is, uh, dramatically faster to edit on the cut page than in pretty much anything else that you've ever used. Um, we did a couple of unique things this year. We did DaVinci Resolve 16 at NAB. It was a public beta, and then when that shipped a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago now, um, we instantly released 16.1 as a public beta, um, just because we wanted to keep adding stuff to this new cut page. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just jump into the cut page, and we're gonna show you how to um, edit some multi-camera footage um, and how quickly that can be done. So I have a bunch of clips here, and I'm just gonna sort uh, my clips by time code. I can select all of my clips and click on this little sync button, and then it presents me with a window that lets me sync in different ways. I can sync by in point, by out point, by time code, of course, if you have time code, or by audio waveform. So I can select audio here, and it'll automatically analyze the audio, and it'll shift all the clips into sync with each other. Right there. <laughs> the applause is okay. We're, we're good with the applause. Okay. All right. So these all have little blue um, sync icons on, which means that these clips are all in sync. So here's what's really cool. I can drop the first one down to my timeline. Now, the cut page has actually two timelines. What you'll see here in the middle is the upper timeline, and that is the entire program. So no matter how long my program is, you can see everything right here in the middle. The lower timeline is basically a zoomed in area. It's the area in which I'm currently working. So unlike traditional analytics, whether it's Premiere or Media Composer or even the regular edit page on Resolve, where you have to constantly zoom in and out, is in and out to navigate your way around the timeline, you never have to do that here because both timelines are fully active. I can go from the beginning to the end of my program right there in the middle timeline, or I can scroll locally here in this middle timeline. So now I've um, sunk these clips together. I can click on uh, this icon at the top left called Sync Bin, and what that does is that instantly shows me any clips that are in sync with the frame at the current location of the playhead. So I can see that I've got some choices if I wanted to make a cut here, right? 
So I can just, let's just scroll to a little, a little further. This is a more interesting part of the, the show. So let's say at this point I decided that I wanted to switch to the shot of her working with these shrimp here. I can trim that up and then I can go and I can use the source overwrite button and it puts it in exactly the right spot in perfect sync. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to just drop a few of these in really quick. So I'm going to select another one here. You can trim your in and out points. I can just use my I and my O keys. I can do another source overwrite. We'll just move it forward a bit. Maybe at this point, we'll go to that shot. So what you can see is I'm building my, my program really, really quickly. And I should switch back to timeline view so you can actually see that, sorry. You can see that these shots are all in perfect sync. And the cool thing is you can go, once you've got these on your timeline, you can of course go and trim them up. Both timelines though are completely active. So I can actually move shots here. I can trim shots on the upper timeline as well as the lower timeline. I can go to the beginning of my program. I can go to the end of my program. Go to the middle of it, no matter where I am. It's just really simple to navigate. So there really, I don't think, has ever been a faster and more accurate way to cut multi-camera stuff. You don't even have to have your time code sync. Um, it's, you know, we like to have time code sync, but unfortunately, <laughs> lots of people uh, don't jam sync their cameras. So you want to use audio or in points and out points, you can do that. So that's just a quick look at um, one of the really new features in 16.1, which is all the sync stuff, which makes it super easy to cut multiple um, multiple camera stuff together. So I'm going to switch projects really quickly and we're going to open one uh, that has a few more clips in it so that I can show you some of the other features here. So this is not a multi-camera shoot. This is just a different shoot. Um, and as you can see, I can go to, from the beginning to the end of my program. This is a promo for the age of airplanes. All right. And uh, you can see we've got color coded clips. You can do all kinds of things. You can arrange your footage into bins. You can navigate through them very easily using the little pop-ups here. So it's all uh, pretty straightforward and simple to do. Sorting stuff by time code, camera duration, clip name, however you'd like to do it um, is all right there. The one thing that I will say is if you're not editing with Resolve, the cut page is actually a place where you can go and you can do all of your work. You can do your editing here. You can do some basic effects and some titling and, and transitions and all that stuff. And then you can jump in and learn the rest of the application at your own speed. So you can use it to get started. It's actually a great place to learn the basics of Resolve. And then as you begin to learn more and more, you can step out to the other pages and go a little deeper. So um, on the cut page, we have some really interesting tools. One of them is called the Boring Detector. So what the Boring Detector does is it lets me define um, the duration for edits that I'm going to say are boring. So I'm going to say anything that's more than a five second shot is boring. And it's just going to highlight that stuff in my timeline. And you can see there, as I've done the analysis, the lighter gray sections. Um, so this first clip here, that's five seconds. And then that's all longer than five seconds. That's what the light gray indicates. So I can say, wow, you know, I've got a boring shot here. So I must need to do something to change that. So I've got a close up button that I can use. And I can say, all right, I don't even have to go. I don't have to match frame. I don't have to find the source clip. I press the close up button and it just makes a close-up of that shot. And we have something in Resolve called the DaVinci Neural Engine, which is an AI-based um, system. And what it does is it actually finds the face in the shot and it frames it appropriately for you. So I've now made this shot not boring because now we do a little cutaway and I can trim that up if I want to. And I am going to just check my audio because I actually want you to hear some of this. So let me just do that. Okay, so let's go to another boring clip. I could see that there is another one here. So in this case, um, let's take a listen. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just mute uh, this audio here so that we can hear his dialogue a little better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is while it's playing back, I'm going to cut a section of this 
interview clip out because as you can see, it's telling me that it's boring, so I need it to be less than five seconds, right? So I'm just gonna use the cut tool on the, um, on the user interface there. Uh, oops, okay, so here we go. If you get the shot and the letter wasn't right, you would go back to that location, stay at that location longer, or did you make the move? Okay, so I just made two cuts. I'm gonna cut out this middle sentence that he says, and I'm just gonna close that up. So here we go. Okay, I need to trim that up because I want to hear or it didn't make the movie. So let's just do that. And we need to make this a little shorter here to get rid of that S. A little more, got to get rid of that S. Okay. Okay, so now I've got this cut. I've made my clip less boring because now I have two clips that are less than five seconds in length. But what's the problem that I have now? The jump cut, right? So you see his head does a hitch. So um, we've got a lot of tools here. Um, they're all smart tools. You can see this little animated carrot here that's pointing down. No matter what edit operation or transition operation I do next, it will automatically place it at the edit point that is highlighted. You don't have to move the playhead to the edit point. It just knows if you're doing an edit operation, you probably want it to go right there at the actual edit point. So I'm gonna hit this button here, which is a smooth cut. And the smooth cut uses optical flow image analysis to actually construct in between frames and take out the jump. Okay, remember that gratuitous applause stuff? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's pretty cool, right? You don't have to cover it with B-roll now as long as, you know, there, there are limits, of course, to tools like this. So as long as the motion is reasonably close, um, you can get away with doing this and it looks completely convincing, like it was just one shot. So um, that's pretty cool. I love that uh, particular feature. You can also, of course, go in and you can add, you know, regular dissolves and all kinds of stuff. So if I go to this edit here, I've got, that's called smooth cut. Yep. So I can go in and just add regular dissolves and transitions. In fact, there is a whole effects library here where I've got video filters, audio filters, transitions. There are literally dozens and dozens of them here that you can use. But uh, the defaults that we have here on the user interface are uh, straight cut, so to remove a transition, the dissolve, and then the smooth cut. And then we've also got different edit buttons here on the interface as well. And I'll just uh, talk about those very briefly. So the first one is a smart insert. Um, and what that does is it just inserts things based on time code. It's the one that I was showing you when we were doing that multi-camera cutting. Um, there is an append at end, which will just add a clip to the end. A ripple overwrite, which replaces a clip of one length in your timeline with a clip of another one. It automatically closes or extends uh, the timeline so that there are no gaps. We already showed you the close up, which uses the facial recognition. Place on top does what it says. It places a clip on top of uh, the next track on the timeline. And then the source overwrite is another time code uh, based overwrite. So that's just a little bit about um, the kinds of cuts you can do. There's also a tool strip here, and let me just go back to this shot. So um, if I open up the tool strip, you get all these tools for doing your, your cropping, your uh, transformation controls like zooming and stuff like that. Uh, you've got audio controls, retiming built in, camera stabilization and lens distortion correction, uh, something called dynamic zoom. And this one I love, because this one is a really easy way to do um, sort of a pan and scan. So let's say I wanted to have this shot start framed a little differently. I want it to be framed on the nose of the aircraft. The green box is where the shot's going to start. And the red box is where the shot's going to end. So that's going to be my framing for the end of the shot. All I do is I go back here, play it, and there it is. So no keyframes, no fudging with numbers. You just use it to visually reframe your shots. So these are some of the benefits of why we have this cut page in here because it really lets you work very, very quickly. We also have a new editor's keyboard, which is a, a hardware keyboard. Obviously, a keyboard is hardware. <laughs> um, but it's got specific tools. It's got specific keys on it for edit operations and also has a, a scroll wheel. So instead of using the mouse to do all of this, you could actually work really, really fast by just clicking through all of your clips. The other thing that's really cool about um, this is I can go into something called source tape mode, all right? 
And let me just turn, uh, hold on. Let me go back here, turn this off. And I'm gonna go back up to my master bin and I'm gonna go into source tape. So what source tape does is it just makes a string out in my viewer of every single clip in the project. So these white divider lines, these are individual clips that are in my bin. If I go into this bin, it rebuilds the source tape to only contain the clips in this bin, uh, in only contain those clips instead of all of them in the project. So it's basically from top level down. Whatever bin you're looking in down, it will show you all the clips that are in there. So that means I don't have to make timeline string outs. If I've got a day's worth of dailies coming in, right? I can just use the source tape feature to find the clips that I want and say, oh, you know what? I want to use this clip from here to here and I want to throw that on my timeline. Well, you can. So you don't have to go hunting through bins to find your clips. The other thing that's really great about the source tape is there's a fast review button. So I can just have it start playing and it adjusts the speed of playback based on the length of the source clip. So long clips play much more quickly than, than shorter clips so that you don't miss anything. So if you've got a bunch of footage that you've just got for the day, there's a great way to use this as a review tool with the source tape mode so that you can get to know your footage before you start editing. So a lot of really great things here on the cut page um, that are pretty awesome. The other thing we can do too is we can change uh, the aspect ratio of our project. And let me just go in and make a change to my preference because that was incorrect. So if I go and I change to my aspect ratios, I can change from square to portrait and I don't have my prep set up properly, I'm sorry. But um, the goal is that it uses the, um, the DaVinci Neural Engine to make sure that everything is framed so there's no letterboxing and pillar, um, pillar boxing so that you can change for, you know, you're doing a square on Instagram or a snap or whatever um, and posting it there. You can change the size. You're doing a phone. You can do portrait. Um, and then from here on the cut page, you can do an export. We have a quick export feature. So I can do H.264, ProRes, YouTube or Vimeo. If I was set up and online here, um, it would actually sign into my YouTube or Vimeo account. It would let me add the metadata. It would render the file and upload it all in one step right from here. So again, the cut page is designed for people that are doing this sort of short form, fast turnaround work. And there's all these great tools in there um, to do that. So I'm going to step over to um, the regular edit page for a few minutes just to show you that. So we've got our, our media pool or our bins and stuff on the left. We've got our source, our record monitor, different than the cut page, which only had the one monitor that switches for you. Um, and then we have our timeline, of course. And then there are different panels that we can open up. So I, if I want to make my timeline wider, I can make my, my bins shorter. I can look at my inspector here, my metadata, which I don't have anything selected for, but there's all the metadata. Um, so there's a lot more power here. There's uh, the audio mixer. So basically the full set of professional editing tools that you would expect from a media composer, a premiere, a final cut, um, and of course, DaVinci Resolve. All right, so this is uh, the regular edit page. Just gonna do some, a little audio work here so that I can show you some of this Fairlight stuff too. So I'm going to uh, turn on the rectified and non-rectified waveforms. We're going to make this a little bigger. And then I'm just going to solo my dialogue and just listen to the dialogue for a little bit. I feel like I should. get the shot and the weather wasn't right. Do you like go back to that location where it didn't make the move? So the dialogue is kind of all over the place, right? The levels, this one's a little quiet. You couldn't get the shot and the weather. This one's a little loud. So what we've added, uh, one of the things that we've added in DaVinci Resolve 16 is the ability to just uh, right click here and normalize our audio levels uh, right from the edit timeline. And I can choose my normalization mode based on my, uh, my metering standards. So you've got uh, all different choices here. And I'm just gonna set it to negative 9 dB. And what this is gonna do is it's, and we're gonna do it for each clip independently. What it's going to do is it's going to look at all the clips and it's going to find the loudest part of that clip and it's going to set it to negative 9 dB. Because for dialogue, we want our dialogue to be bouncing in sort of the yellow area of our meters. That's kind of the sweet spot for dialogue. And um, actually, before I do that, let me just show you this. This one's popping into the red. You see how that's popping into the red? And then this one is far lower than it should be. So if I go here and I do that normalization operation, I do this, watch the waveforms are going to change. And now 
you'll see that they're going to bounce right in the middle, which is exactly where we want them to be. All right, so that's a, just a little quick look at the normalization. Uh, other things that are really important for people, you know, you're working with music beds, right? And you've got dialogue. I'm going to turn this up a little bit so you all can hear it. Sorry. I think it's this one. No? There we go. Ah, now you'll be able to hear it. Okay. So, so what's wrong with our mix? Music's way too loud, right? So I can go in and let me just make uh, these track heights a little shorter so you can see them. I can go in and I can rubber band or keyframe the levels on that audio in every time there's a dialogue clip. I can bring it down, bring it up, bring it down, bring it up, right? But that's a pain. So we have ducking. If I click over to the Fairlight page, the Fairlight page is a full-blown digital audio workstation. I'm just gonna shut some of this extra stuff off. We'll get to that in a minute. Full-blown digital audio workstation right here inside of DaVinci Resolve. So you've got editing, you've got color correction, you've got visual effects and motion graphics, and you've got digital audio. The benefit to all of this is that when I need to do one of those things, it's one timeline, it's one project. I don't have to import, export, go to another application, render something out, bring it back in and manage all of my changes. Everything's right here. So what we can do um, on the Fairlight page, one of the many things that we can do is we can do ducking, which means it will automatically lower the volume of the music when, it's hears, when it hears dialogue. So let me just show you how that works. So on our mixer here, we have dynamics, panning, effects processing, all the things that you would expect to have on a mixer. I'm just gonna open my dynamics panel. And um, when I click on audio track one, you can see that the dynamics panel says audio one at the top. If I click on audio two, it says audio two. If I click on track three, it says track three. So as I click through, that's what we're working with. So I go to my dialogue track, which is track one, and I just tell it to send the signal from that track. I go to track three, I turn on my compressor, and I say, listen. So now track three is listening to track one. And then I just set some thresholds, and I set some, some numbers here. This is basically just setting the amount, it's setting what we're listening for. So it's setting like, when I hear something on track one of a certain dB, I'm gonna pull my music down and compress it um, so that it all fits. So let me just turn my ratio up here. And then the attack and the release is how quickly or, or how slowly it changes the volume. And then the hold is just, um, it'll hold the level change if there is say like a gap between his speaking or something. So I'm just setting the number of milliseconds to wait before it actually makes a change. So just a few quick settings there. Let me go back here and here we go. So that's pretty cool. Really quick way to do audio ducking, you don't have to manually set anything up. Now I've made it really obvious. You would probably do it a little more gently than I just did, but I was just trying to prove a point. Okay, so that's um, a little bit about Fairlight. We've looked at the edit, we've looked at the cut page. Probably not gonna have too much time to do visual effects sort of stuff today. So let me jump to the color page and we'll take a look at some of the color stuff. Oh, you know what? We're gonna go to the edit page first. I'm gonna show you a couple more things. So um, there are some really cool things that you can do on the edit page. Um, for example, let's say I wanted to add a vignette to all of his clips, right? We have this new thing in DaVinci Resolve 16 called uh, adjustment clips. So I can drag an adjustment clip down here and I'm just gonna put it on video two and I'm gonna put it right over him. Now, the cool thing about adjustment clips is that I can apply filters, effects, color correction to an adjustment clip and it actually affects everything below it. So I don't have to apply my vignettes or anything like that uh, to each individual clip. I can just go in and I can say, all right, let me go find my vignette. It's in this list somewhere. There it is. I'm gonna drag that there. If I open the inspector, you can see here, are, and I'm just gonna turn the mixer off. 
So we're working at 1080 here. It's, it's a little easier to work on a higher resolution screen. Um, so I've got to move a bunch of stuff around. But here is my uh, vignette, and you can, of course, adjust all of the settings. These can be keyframed or animated over time. Any effect parameter can be keyframed or animated over time here in Resolve. The other thing that's kind of cool is I can give this a name, and I can say this is Paul's vignette. So now that's got a name, and I can go back to my bin, and I can drag this back into the bin, which is great because now I can use this. I can reuse it. So I can say maybe I want to add it to the clips at the beginning too. All I do is go over here and I say, place that on top. And now we have vignettes on this. So anywhere I drag this adjustment clip, it's going to add a vignette to everything underneath it. I could have, you know, with the adjustment clip, I could have said, you know what, I want these clips to be zoomed in. And now both clips underneath this will be zoomed in. That looks pretty crazy, so let's not do that. Um, and then the other thing that we can do is we can go in here in the timeline, and I'm just going to zoom in. And you can adjust um, curves, the ease in and ease out of the parameters as we're changing them, um, right here in the timeline. So you can see I've got my vignette, so I'm going to just adjust my vignette size, for example. And you can just click to add a couple of keyframes, and you can adjust that. So now that's going to animate over time. And you can see that right here. Get the shot of the weather wasn't right. You need to go back to that. So basically anything that you could possibly want to do from an editorial standpoint, you can do on the traditional edit page. So all of your effects, all of your transitions, all of your animation kind of stuff, um, you can do here on the traditional edit page. You have a lot more fine grain control uh, to do more sophisticated kinds of things here than you do on the cut page. So just depending on the kind of project you're working on, you may want to work in this page, or maybe you want to start in the cut page, get a rough cut going, because you can do that very quickly, and then switch here to do all of your fine tuning. All right, so let's, uh, let's end with a little visual effects. So I mean, this is the color page, and I'm just going to make some room here, and I'm going to change to a, a couple of other clips here. So I'm just going to adjust my interface. So the way the color page is laid out is you've got your image here at the top, you got a node tree here. We work with nodes on the color page instead of layers, like in a timeline. And basically, node, you can think of nodes like an image processing flowchart. So the image comes in, we do something to it, we add another node, we do something else to it, and it goes back out eventually. All right. And then across the bottom are all these different tool palettes. So we have our primary corrections, our raw controls, chip chart controls, um, RGB mixer. And then in the center here, we have our curves, our qualifiers, uh, windows tracking, all kinds of things. And then on the right, we have things like scopes and keyframes. And the scopes have been redesigned in um, Resolve 16, so I can pop those out now if I want. You've got all different kinds of options. And they are GPU accelerated, so they actually um, look really great. So let me just do, uh, let's just turn on the waveform. Okay, so in this particular clip, um, and let me just go full screen. We've got uh, a couple of kids here walking through. And here's the story. So those two are actually on a date, and, and that guy's lurking. And we just, we, we got to get rid of him. We want to take him out of the shop. So I know. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you quickly um, how I could draw a shape around this guy. And I'm, gonna, I'm being a little sloppy here. So I've got a shape around this guy. And now I'm going to click on our tracker. And we're going to track the guy. And in this particular shot, there's um, because the camera's not really moving, uh, the tracker works better if I do it manually. So I'm just going to move forward a few frames. We'll just move that. Move forward a few more frames. We'll do that. And then come back, put it back there, come back, put it there. Okay, so that should follow him pretty closely. Let's see. Okay, not bad. All right, so we go back to the middle. So I'm going to add another node because we're going to do a different operation now. So we've done a shape in this node, and now in the next node, we're going to do an object removal. So I'm going to add a serial node, and that, as its name applies, is one after the other. 
The connection line between the green square and the green triangle is the RGB image data, and the blue one, which I'm about to connect now, is the alpha channel, which we need to do our object removal. So I'm going to go into the effects library, and these are some of the same effects that we have on the regular edit page, so you can use them in both places. Um, most of them are available in both places. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go and I'm going to find our object removal, which all kinds of things in here. There's object removal. We've got beauty plugins that will automatically identify a face so you can, you know, adjust lip color, eye color, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to show my mask overlay and we're going to say analyze the scene. So now what it's doing is it's looking at every pixel and every frame of the scene and it's trying to figure out, okay, what's the best way to make this guy go away? Um, all right, so it's done its magic. So let me just move this to the middle here and he's gone. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. For, it's almost time for the applause, but look, we've got some, we got some garbage here, right? So it's, it's hiccuped on a couple of frames. But most of, all, most of it looks pretty good, right? We've got a little bit of weird stuff there and a little bit of weird stuff at the beginning. So there's this button that says build clean plate. And what that does, it just builds a clean plate so it looks at the image and it figures out what those pixels would be where there are no changes in that particular frame. And then I will play that back. And now we have successfully removed him. So there's so much um, power here in Resolve. It's just crazy. Um, there's, like I said, there's beauty, there's all kinds of stuff. I'm just gonna show you very quickly um, a couple of titles. So let's just do, we have a bunch of, um, we've got a bunch of titles that are uh, from Fusion. So I'm gonna add this one here. And this is a 3D title in a box, so I can, Go in and I can customize it and say, uh, we love Resolve, right? And then, now I'm on a, a MacBook Pro here, a 15-inch MacBook Pro. So um, depending on your system, this uh, may or may not play back real time. So we love Resolve, there you go. So lots of animated titles and templates and things built in. But if you wanted to go in and actually work on that, you could go to the Fusion page and you could, let me ungroup this, you could see how that title is constructed and you can edit it. So um, we're not going to spend any more time on the Fusion page, but I just wanted to point out that the Fusion page is a full-blown 3D compositing and visual effects environment along with motion graphics animation. So um, you can do all of this kind of work right here in Resolve. And you can customize this, you can build your own vi visual effects from scratch. Um, it gets pretty deep pretty quickly, but the beautiful thing about it is that you never have to leave the application. So uh, in closing, I'll just talk about the two different versions of Resolve. There's the free version, which you can download, and um, it is really, really full featured. Um, and I, I highly recommend if you don't have one of our cameras or if you don't want to drop the $300 just to try it, go download it. For $299, which is the full price of Studio, you get things like the facial recognition, the um, ability to export at higher than Ultra HD resolutions, you get stereoscopic 3D, you get um, noise uh, removal, you get film grain, you get blur and mist effects. There's a ton of additional Resolve effects filters that you get um, for your video. Uh, one of the most important things though, I think, is collaboration. So with DaVinci Resolve Studio, if you are working with other people, you can all be working in the same project at the same time. So while an editor is editing, you can have a colorist or two or three coloring scene, coloring shots while the editor is still trimming the, the footage. You can have visual effects artists working on VFX shots while the editor is still cutting. You can have somebody in Fairlight. You can have assistant editors on the media page adding dailies, adding bins, sorting stuff. And it is all updated live and synchronized. So. Um, a super, super powerful way to work with multiple people in DaVinci Resolve um, if you go with Studio. And even if you aren't collaborating with other users, the amount of additional effects and filters and plugins and things that you get with Studio uh, alone is more than worth the $299. So uh, let's just talk quickly about training. Those are the two different versions. 
We, offer, we have a training page on the DaVinci Resolve website at blackmagicdesign.com where you can download um, probably 3,000 pages worth of PDFs that give you in-depth training for the entire application. Right? So those are free. If you want hard copies, you can actually buy the books off of amazon.com. You have to pay for the books, but you can get the PDFs and all the training files and sample files for free. And then if you want, you can take the certification exams at the end. Um, it's all on our website. So free software, free training, buy a camera, you get studio, or just spend 300 bucks. It's the deal of the century. Um, praise Jesus. <laughs> Thank you.